Congratulations! You've chosen a Millermatic, a MIG welding power source with a proud history and today's technology. This video consists of five segments Millermatic products, power source setup, basic welding techniques, troubleshooting welding techniques, and troubleshooting the welding system. Millermatic welders are built to industrial standards of quality and durability for years of productive use. There is a model for almost any MIG welding application, from welding thin gauge materials all the way up to half inch plate, even stainless steels and aluminum. While both the weld output and primary power vary from model to model, all share some important features. An industrial quality self-contained wire feeder with cast aluminum drive roll housing, easy to operate heat controls and wire speed fine tuning, thermal overload protection of the power source, a gas solenoid valve, and power and work cables. A MIG gun and cable assembly is also included with all single phase models. Before you start assembling your new MIG welding system, take a few minutes to review the safety information in the owner's manual. Sure, you may have heard it all before, but it's worth a little time to prevent unnecessary injury. Supplying primary power to the Millermatic 130XP is as simple as plugging the machine into a standard 115 volt AC 20 amp household receptacle. The other Millermatic models use 200 volts or greater single phase primary power, except for the Millermatic 300, which uses three phase primary power. Several models use jumper links to accommodate a range of voltages to fit your shop requirements. The owner's manual instructions are clear on how to change primary voltage and the links are easy to set for your shop voltage. The primary power cord can be hardwired to a fused line disconnect electrical box or an appropriately rated pendant with female receptacle and power cord plug can be used. These connections should be made by a qualified technician in accordance with NEC and local electrical codes. The electrical service guide in the owner's manual has specific information on wire sizes, fuse ratings, and maximum wire lengths for various shop voltages. In addition to safety information and primary power hookup, your owner's manual contains simple setup instructions. Begin by attaching the work cable clamp. Set the polarity for flux cord or solid wire. The drive roll is factory installed, but you can easily change the roll to accommodate different wire sizes. Insert the weld cable into the wire feeder. Tighten the securing nut and plug in the trigger lead connector. The owner's manual explains how to load the wire spool and feed wire through the drive mechanism. Note that the wire feeds from the bottom of the spool. And remember to keep tension on the wire at all times to prevent unspooling. Before feeding wire, remove the gun nozzle and contact tip. Now turn on the power source and pull the gun trigger until the wire feeds through the end of the gun. When you pull the gun trigger, the welding wire is electrically hot. Do not allow the wire to come in contact with the power source, the work cable, or anything the work cable may be connected to. After replacing the contact tip and gun nozzle, loosen the pressure knob. Then pull the gun trigger to feed wire against a non-conductive surface. Adjust the pressure knob just enough so that wire feeds smoothly.
Finally, adjust the hub tension for the wire spool so that only a slight force is needed to turn the spool by hand. The diagrams are easy to understand. Follow the owner's manual and you won't have any trouble. The Millermatic 130 XP and the Challenger 172 come complete with a sample spool of 030 flux cord welding wire, so they're ready to weld out of the box. But to get the full benefits of the MIG process, you'll probably choose to have a cylinder of shielding gas, a regulator flow gauge, a gas hose, and a drive roll for solid wire. Some Millermatic models are shipped with a regulator flow gauge as standard equipment. For other models, you will have to provide it. Plug the gas hose into the receptacle on the rear panel of your new Millermatic, and if you're an experienced MIG welder, you're ready to weld. Miller offers a variety of welding accessories to complement your new Millermatic, including running gear and cylinder rack, spool guns for aluminum, replacement MIG guns, gun cable holder, and consumable parts such as contact tips and cable liners. If you're a new welder or want to brush up on some basic welding techniques, the next section of this video is for you. Before welding, you'll need to provide a welding helmet with a number 10 shade, leather gloves, safety glasses, a chipping hammer, wire brush, wire cutters, and small hand tools. We'll be using a Millermatic 130 XP for this demonstration. We've already done the initial setup of the machine, including the installation of a drive roll for solid wire. A spool of 030 solid welding wire has been installed and fed to the gun and a bottle of 75% argon, 25% CO2 shielding gases in place on the optional running gear cylinder rack. First, we need to adjust the shielding gas flow rate. Because the wire is hot for this adjustment, Miller recommends that before turning on the power source, the drive roll tension be released so wire won't feed. Next, close the flow adjust knob. Turn on the cylinder valve. Turn on the power source, and while pulling the trigger on the MIG gun, open the flow adjust control until the gauge reads 20 cubic feet per hour. We'll be using 14 gauge metal for some of our demonstrations, so we'll check the door decal for our weld settings. We set the front panel controls, and our equipment is ready. The most common weld joints are the butt joint, the T, the lap, the edge, and the corner joint. There are two angles you need to be concerned about when making a weld, the work angle and the travel angle. The gun should be tilted between 5 and 15 degrees as it travels along the joint. When the gun is moved in this direction, it is a push angle, usually used on thinner materials. When it's moved in this direction, it's a drag angle, used for greater penetration on thicker materials. The second angle, the work angle, is determined by the joint design. For example, when you're welding a butt joint, the gun should be held so the angle is 90 degrees to either side of the gun. To weld the T-joint, the gun is held so the angle is 45 degrees to either side of the gun. On a lap joint, the weld is made at the point where the two pieces of metal overlap each other. It's best to aim the gun slightly more at the top piece so it will receive the same amount of penetration as the bottom piece. A major cause of defective welds is a lack of proper metal preparation. The area where the weld is to be placed must be clean and free of paint, rust, oil, and other contaminants. It's a good idea to grind, sand, or wire brush the area where the weld is to be made to ensure that it's clean. When you're making a weld, current flows from the welding machine, through the gun cable, the gun, through the arc, the base metal, the work clamp, and work cable, and back to the welding machine. 
This is the welding circuit, and it's critical that it be complete and all connections properly made. When you're ready to weld, turn the machine on. Put on safety glasses, your helmet and gloves, and get into a comfortable position. Hold the pieces in place and position the gun with the wire slightly above the joint. Make a tack weld by depressing the gun trigger. Slightly rock the gun from piece to piece. About two seconds should be adequate. Space the tack welds about three inches apart to minimize distortion. This is what a good tack weld should look like. Now you can begin welding. To minimize distortion, it's best to make skip welds. If you're right-handed, hold the gun in your right hand and weld left to right. Our welder is using a push angle on this thin stock. If you're left-handed, simply do the opposite. As you make the weld, watch the weld puddle. Move the gun to keep the welding wire on the leading edge of the weld puddle. A common mistake most beginning welders make is traveling too fast. Try to maintain about one quarter to three eighths inch of stick out. That's the distance between the end of the contact tube and the weld puddle. With the right machine settings, the right travel speed, and the right stick out, you'll be able to achieve a good weld bead like this one. After you gain some experience, you'll be able to tell when the settings are correct by listening to the sound of the arc. It should be a smooth, unbroken sound. As far as shielding gas, you can use either carbon dioxide or a mixture of 75% argon and 25% carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide costs less and will produce a deeper, more penetrating weld. The 75-25 mixture produces a smoother, less penetrating weld. Now let's look at some welding problems and some ways to correct them. Excessive splatter can have several causes. Try these remedies. Reduce the wire feed speed. Select a lower voltage range. Use a shorter stick out. Make sure that the workpiece and wire are clean. Protect the weld area from drafts or increase the flow of shielding gas. Here's another problem. This is an example of having the wire feed speed set too high. Notice the size of the bead compared to the thickness of the metal. And here is the opposite condition. Wire feed speed set too low. Notice the uneven bead. Use the weaving technique to increase fusion, as you see being done here. Here's how a finished weld should look. Excessive penetration, that is, when the weld metal extends all the way through and hangs below the joint, is caused by too much heat. Here are two things to try in order to reduce heat. First, try lowering the voltage and reducing the travel speed. Or, keep your current settings and try increasing your travel speed. Burn through, or melt through, is caused by excessive heat. First, check that your weld settings conform to the table on the wire feeder door. Use tack welds to maintain workpiece stability. Use a faster, more consistent travel speed. The wire diameter you're using may be too large for the thickness of the workpiece. Switching from CO2 to a mixed shielding gas helps to minimize burn through. Becoming an accomplished welder requires practice, so don't become discouraged if your initial welds are not satisfactory. Your Miller Welding Distributor can supply you with technical assistance and instructional materials from Miller Electric that can help to increase your proficiency.
If your power source is not operating properly, the troubleshooting section of the owner's manual is helpful. If your power source is completely inoperative, check the primary power connections and circuit breakers or fuses. A gun trigger connector that is loose or unconnected will also cause this condition. No weld output with a running fan motor may be a sign of overheating. The internal protective thermostat will automatically reset when the unit has cooled. On the Millermatic 130 XP and the Challenger, if drive rolls are not turning, motor fuse F1 may have blown. It happens only rarely, but it may need to be replaced. Or PC1 may be faulty and require repair by a factory authorized service agent. All other Millermatic models have circuit breakers protecting the motor circuit, which can be reset. If wire feeds but you have no weld output, your work clamp may not be making a solid connection to the workpiece. The contact tip may be worn or be the wrong size for the wire you are using. Or the polarity changeover links may be loose and not making good contact. Your power source will not provide full output if the line voltage is low. Check it with a voltmeter to be sure it meets the primary power specifications for your power source model. If wire feeding stops during welding, the problem may be as simple as having a bend that's too tight in the weld cable. There may not be enough drive roll pressure. The drive roll itself may be the wrong size for the wire you're using. The hub tension may be too great or the contact tip may be blocked. Check the troubleshooting section of the owner's manual for other suggestions. Millermatic welders are high quality power sources with excellent arc performance. Because of the quality components and sturdy construction, you can expect years of service from your new purchase.